Routines took over all of his basic functions. But you're saying that he still knew the difference between right and wrong. In a sense, that's all he knew. Yes, because the ethical battles of right and wrong are now easily programmable facts in the future. Hey, Data, which of these is ethically sound? Abortion, stem cell research, death penalty. That's what I thought. But they get Data back to normal, and he takes them to the last place he remembers before his programming went wacky. I believe I know what is causing the neutrino emissions. Yep, no machines, except for this giant machine-looking thing here to drain the lake. But that's as common as a garden hoe, isn't it? Oh, and did I mention they have a dam, too? That's right, a dam. As in, these are some damn big hypocrites! They discover an invisible ship with a holodeck replica of their town in it. Another thing that they could have just worked on in space! But some bad guys see them and start to attack! For as exciting as this all is, I honestly just keep thinking back to whatever happened to that blue guy. What were his theories of thermionic transconductance? Much more thought-provoking questions than the rest of this movie is asking. Help! I can't oh, What? Are you kidding me? Is water technology now? Are you resisting the shackles of H2O? And on top of that, it turns out she's had plenty of time to learn how to swim. We discover that several of the adults there are over 300 years old. That's what the metaphasic radiation of the planet does. Yeah, what the hell's her excuse? In 300 years, you never learned to swim. I just haven't got around to it yet. You are stupid! So, basically, the Federation wants to use the planet as a means to find cures and other medical miracles. Sounds good. So, what, have they talked to these people about working together, or...? Nope, they just plan to beam them off the planet when they're asleep. Odd. Well, I'm sure now that they know the Baku are willing to help others by letting them study the planet... Nope, they see it as their home. They hate technology, we have technology, therefore they hate us. Okay, well, I guess that's legit seeing how it's their planet... It's not! What the fuck are you talking about?! Yeah, technically the planet is under Federation control, and they say that they came there 300 years ago from their own home planet, so they don't own squat! Well then why the hell don't they just kick these greedy cure-for-death holders out then? So Picard can make speeches like this! Some of the darkest chapters in the history of my world involve the forced relocation of a small group of people. Just as cultures have been destroyed in every other forced relocation throughout history. Oh, really? Is that why you participated in at least two forced relocations? And guess what? One of them was a group of Indians, and he was going to do the exact same plan as they're doing here. Do you know how long we have searched for a home? I believe that I can help you to find a new home. But hey, these are white people and not Native Americans, so it's totally different, I guess. Yeah, that's true. There's a group of stretchy-faced people that are looking to harness the planet's power because they're dying. Yet these selfish jerks are like, You use an electric razor? You deserve to croak. We're only moving 600 people. How many people does it take, Admiral, before it becomes wrong? 601, obviously. We'll be able to use the regenerative properties of this radiation to help billions. And I'm sorry, but I gotta reference my clips again. <laughs> this is what I was referring to before. At the same time this movie came out, the series Deep Space Nine was on. And during that series, the Federation was at war with a powerful enemy called the Dominion. And the Federation was losing. Badly. And according to their projections, if the Federation loses, 800 billion people will die. And I'm sorry, but uh, doesn't Star Trek have a particular clip for this kind of thing? The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. I'm sorry, but I'm completely on the side of the bad guys here. Critic? I'm done. The movie's over? No. Well, screw you then.
All right, so Picard decides to go down alone. If he's going down alone, why does he have all those guns? He can't carry them all, and the Baku already said that they won't use weapons. Well, because he knows his crew is going to throw the same bullshit that every Star Trek crew throws. I don't want you to come. We're coming. Okay. Oh, and don't forget the totally out of nowhere trailer line from Data. Saddle up. Lock and load. So they're leading the people away from the town. Wait, isn't that what the bad guys wanted anyway? Kind of doing them a favor, aren't you? I'm just wondering where the sun is in the solar system. We never saw it in any of the space shots. But then the villains come in to hit them with darts and force them to get beamed out. W why don't you just beam them out regularly? <laughs> But they get away! I'm guessing they just sort of cut off screen and then they're somewhere else. As Data tries to comfort the boy who just lost his father. Do machines ever play? Yes. I play the violin. Look, if you want to know what it's like to be a child, you need to learn to play. Oh yeah, he sounds traumatized. Hey now, everybody treats grief differently. Some choose to accept it by... not realizing they have it at all. We also see Picard and boring woman who won't be any future movie, so it doesn't matter, start to hit it off. I should warn you, I've always been attracted to older women. How are you doing this? No more questions. Uh, yeah, questions! Lots of questions! Yeah, this is science fiction! At least SOME questions have to be answered! Nothing? Nothing at all? Okay, she's a wizard. Anyway, we see more Mega Man robots catch up with them, and they try hiding in a cave. Thanks for saving us with your technology. By the way, we hate technology. While that's going on, the bad guys are attacking the Enterprise while Riker tries to escape them. You ever notice a pattern in these movies? The car leads the ship and Riker always destroys it. Computer, access manual steering column. Transfer helm controls to manual. A joystick. Riker is piloting the ship with a joystick. This has just become a half-assed Wing Commander game, folks. Now, let's be fair. A real video game version of this film would be far worse. Do you think the moving of 600 people to save 800 billion people is ethically sound? You have selected? Yes! You are of course wrong! Game over. But they then get stuck in a cave and a bunch of rocks fall on top of that boring lady. Picard then says dialogue that even Rick Astley wouldn't put in one of his love songs. Stay with me. Help me find the power to keep you in this moment. Stay with me. Don't let go of this moment. Stay with me! Don't let go of this moment! But then something remarkable happens, I guess. She slows down the moment so that the others can arrive in time. Oh, I thought she was gonna have an emotion. Hey, I said remarkable, not a miracle. She's stabilizing. Oh, thanks for saving me with your medical technology. By the way, I hate technology. I'm still wondering what happened to that blue guy. Were they important theories? Would they change the dynamics of anything? So in a twist, or at least I think that's what they're calling it, it turns out that the dying race called the Sona are the exact same race as the Baku. They just left the planet so they didn't have the healing powers that the Baku had. So as you can see, the ethical standpoint of this movie is so weak that they had to make up other reasons to hate the bad guys. Well, you can also tell he's the villain by the fact that he looks like Salieri's skin melting. Oh yeah, I forgot. That's F. Murray Abraham, isn't it? It's okay, I think even he forgot he was F. Murray Abraham in this picture. Moving them is one thing, killing them all. No one hated them more than you, Gola. So it's a little confusing, but pretty much everyone keeps ship hopping and they fool the Sona by beaming them onto a holodeck, which is programmed to look like the bridge of their ship. They just happen to have that program in there? No more questions, Linkara. Unable to comply. Injector assembly one has been deactivated. Ah!
He screams like a baby elephant and then goes over to the collector device for the rings and then Picard beams over there and they have a really crappy action scene and blah blah blah. You're really going to risk igniting the exhaust? All right. I will. No! Most useless villain ever. So Picard is beamed up, the ship is destroyed, and we get our one funny line in the movie. The soda crew would like to negotiate a ceasefire. It may have something to do with the fact that we have three minutes of air left. So bored by the rest of this, I can't even bring myself to laugh at that. We also see that Data has discovered playing! Seven years of character development on a TV show and three movies, and it all comes down to playing. Don't forget, you have to have a little fun every day. Start by not watching this movie. Linkara, I'm not gonna lie, I do think that's the worst one. You see? Even if you took out the ethical discussions, the film as a whole is just a bore. The action is dull. The effects are dull. It's paced more like a really lame episode than it is a feature film. It just feels like nothing was accomplished. And even the worst Star Trek movies left me with something. At least one or two interesting moments. But this is totally forgettable and has nothing backing it. And in a way, for a Star Trek movie, you could argue that is the worst crime you could ever commit. Oh, wait, 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 we still have all the problems of Nemesis to go through, and I'm not just talking continuity errors here. I'm oh, God, Linkara, have you no heart? Hey, why don't you turn off the TV? Oh, I got plenty of... What the fuck? All right, sci-fi guy, you've been there long enough. I think you've learned your lesson. What lesson? I didn't do anything. You want to go back in the corner? No. Well, thanks everybody for joining me for Star Trek Month. I hope you enjoyed it. And... All right, all right, I'll quickly go over Star Trek Nemesis. This is the film that everyone says is the other bad Trek film, but to be fair, I don't think it's that bad. It's got some annoying scenes and way too much action, but the whole idea of nature literally versus nurture I thought was kind of fascinating. I like the idea that Picard had to battle his younger self, and that in a different environment, maybe he could have been something entirely different. And the relationship between the two, I think in many respects, is actually kind of heartbreaking. To me, that's the glue that held the movie together. Is it good? Technically, on a storytelling level, probably not. But I have to admit, I enjoyed watching it for the most part. But yeah, I'll admit, as an ending for the Next Generation franchise, it probably wasn't all that it could be. I mean, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. It could have been Star Trek Insurrection! Well, I think... Get out of the corner!